Well, good morning. Welcome to another uh, digging adventure. This time it would be uh, just me, Digger Dave, by myself. Uh, digging today, my beautiful wife Shelly couldn't be here. She had to work today, so we've got to keep our insurance up. You know how that is, so hope everybody's staying safe. And I'm just out here isolating myself. Uh, I hope that you'll enjoy this. We'll see what we can find. So I'm going to start right off here. I just started opening up a hole and I'm going to uh, try to get the camera down where you can see it here. All right, let's see if we can get that right in there. There's a bottle sticking out there. You can see. So we can get down in here. I don't know if you can see this very good or not. But see, it looks like a soda sticking out there. It's not very deep. It was just right underneath some bricks up here on top. Well, let's see what we got here. I think it's a crown top soda. Yeah. There it is. Looks like it's whole. American Bottling Company, New Orleans. So, all right. Well, that's a start. Wish it said Coca Cola on it or something. That'd be really cool. <laughs> but, anyhow, I'll show a couple others right over here. Um, just pulled this one out a minute ago. It's a sharpened dome, Baltimore. A little six-sided medicine or poison type bottle, some people call them. A couple other little things there. There's a glass stopper, uh, pipe stem, hard rubber, or gutta percha. Part of an old glass syringe. You see it's broken up there. But put that in my bucket anyway so I don't lose it. Yeah, a nice uh, New Orleans uh, medicine bottle. Oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. I.L. Lions and Company, New Orleans. So, anyway, just getting started here. Decided to dig here where there's some shade, but it probably won't last for long, so. All right, I'm gonna get back to dig. Okay, just found a couple things here. To show you, I can't, <laughs> I can't hardly leave the camera on, because I'm just kind of digging in here, getting a hole opened up, but. Uh, this is a nice little hand-blown bottle, uh, Mexican Mustang Liniment from New York, Lion Manufacturing Company. And it's a little hand-blown bottle, probably from 1890s. Uh, there's a little slick, no name on it, little hand-blown. That first bottle was a, about 1915 crown top, and it was right up on top. But once you get down in here, it's, it's all 1880s and 90s, that kind of stuff. There was a couple other little interesting things here. There's a couple old thermometers. What's left of old glass thermometers. I don't know if you can see the white there. I don't know if the mercury's all leaked out or not. It's probably leaking out of my hands. I'll probably die of mercury poisoning. But <laughs> and a nice old glass stopper there. Okay. And then this was pretty cool. Well, they found these marbles. One's a little green glass one speckles like white clouds inside of it and a little commie or crocky call them this was pretty cool and what it was was an old bank it's a red ware it was right on the bottom you can see it was hand painted yellow i don't know if it was an apple or what it was of course it's broken i don't know if i even got it all but anyway i'm gonna clean it up and See what's there but that's all the pieces i could find of it but it's a little redware like orange or apple and uh, we'll try to get that cleaned up but that was pretty neat and this one is a little sperm sewing machine oil or a sperm whale uh, we've got the sun coming in now at a bad angle don't we but anyway that's a real nice one from 1880s or 90s sperm sewing machine oil and they nearly hunted the sperm whales to extinction but anyhow I'm gonna get my little bitty shovel. There's a bottle sticking out right here. If you can see that. And it looks green. Like it might be one of them keepers bottles, but let's see if we can get it out. It's stuck in this hard stuff. So, and there's wood around it, of course. Ugh, that's hard to get that out of there. But alright, well, I just want to greet everybody. Hope you can stay along for the adventure here today. I'm gonna be digging a Hopefully a couple days here while Shelly's working. And uh, I feel kind of guilty getting to get out and enjoy it while poor old Shelly's working. But 
you know all right there it is yeah it's whole cool you know and Shelly this is for you you dug one just like this last time I think it's a green capers it was a type of a bud off a of capers plant I, I call them pickles I don't know why but anyway they're not these were uh, capers most of them are from France you can see it's kind of like concave panels on it but a real pretty uh, green color and it looks whole it's a hand-blown bottle it's got a smooth sheared lip on that we've taken a cork top smooth base of course there's not hardly any panels in here although we did get one really good one <laughs> But all right, well that's a good start. So we'll see what else we got here. Alrighty, just a few minutes later, you can see we got some kind of a brick structure here. Feature could be a footing, could be a wall of an old outdoor house privy or something. But you can see the brick stacked here. But I think it's just a, a footing because I don't see the wall. There was a couple more bricks in here I pulled out. But anyway. Oh, the camera's about to fall over. Let me get it set a little bit here. But anyway, right down in here, you can see here's another one of those pieces of thermometer, which I'm saving them. And looks like a bottle right there. Partially uncovered, but I'm going to dig it out with my hand digger. Always want to dig up. Oh, I think the lip's broke on it. Yep. Nope. I thought the lip was broke. Cool. And it is. Yay, it's whole. It's uh, James Ginnart Creole Mustard, New Orleans. All right. Nice little 1880s, 90s mustard bottle from New Orleans. I just like those. I don't know why. That's cool. All right. I'm glad that was whole. I don't know if there's anything else down in there. Let's just dig real briefly here. A little hand digger. Uh oh, there's a cobalt piece. Ooh, that'd have been cool. Old cobalt broken medicine. Right underneath them bricks sometimes. Oh, there's a stopper. Yay. Stopper to little apothecary medicine bottle there. Ground. All right, maybe the bottle will be in there. If it's not, I can always use those. All right, let's see if there's anything else. And if it's a sunny day, it's going to be hot. I'm probably going to have to get out of this spot here for too long. All right, it's real hard packed stuff, as you can see hard pack clay so anyway I got to get in here with a shovel get those things bricks out of there all right just pulled out a nice little hand-blown Bromel seltzer bottle cobalt blue one of the older hand-blown ones from 1890s yeah medium size and there's another bottle sticking out right here I don't know if you can see that or not Digging around, it looks like it's square. Come on, baby. Be something. Oh, it's in broke. Oh, well. What was it? No name on it. It was a slick. Okay, well, and there's another one right there. Let's see what it is. I'm going to get out a little bigger shovel for that one. And uh, somebody was saying, you know, it's a good idea to use a smaller shovel. And I concur. That's exactly what I like doing. Is I'll be moving the dirt with a big shovel. And then when we hit something, I use one of these smaller, smaller blade shovels. And this looks like a Duffy malt whiskey bottle, but let's see if it's whole. Looks like it's wanting to come out. Yeah, there we go. Duffy malt whiskey. It's from Rochester. It's got an applied lip, though. Older, older one with applied lip. Got the 1886 patent date on the bottom there. You can see. But, oh, I always like digging those. Duffy Malt Whiskey from Rochester, New York. Nice old one. Probably in the late 80s, early 90s. Alright. See if there's anything else right nearby there. I'm starting to maybe hit into a couple little things here. So that's a good thing. Oh, I heard something back in there. Oh yeah, there's a medicine or something back there. I don't know if you can see it. Well, just a piece of one, but hey. We're gonna dig it out together. Kind of get the fun of seeing what it is. It could be a nothing, it could be something really cool. Unknown. Shelly girl pulled out that Ronald Mickle John's remedy a while back, and that was a big surprise to us. I was tired and we weren't hitting a whole lot. 
All right, it's not wanting to come out, so it must still stuck in there. Some broken pieces there. Let me get those out. Kind of got to watch when you're digging like that. You don't want to pry too much against that glass. A piece of glass could pop up in your eye. But, all right, let's see here. It's about ready to come out. It's paneled medicine, looks like. Get one more time under it. Leave some of the pressure. Here it comes. It's got water in it. That's a good sign. Come on, baby. Yeah. All right. It's a cuta cura. It's a cuta cura system of curing constitutional humors. <laughs> I always like those. Potter Drug and Chemical Company. Yeah, nice old applied lip one. Yeah. 1880s bottle. We'll take it. Not embossed very bold. You probably can't even see that. In the sun glare but they called uh, constitutional humors it was like in our body had different humors and they used to believe in the 1800s that those humors would get out of line and make you sick so I had to get the humors back in proper relation so <laughs> that was a common belief back then but all right, it's got a trashy look to it don't it let me see if I can get it more where I'm going here all right well for just a second here. What that is? It's something milk glass, probably broken. Uh, not sure what it is. Ooh, you know what? I think it's. Well, yeah, I guess it's broken off of something. I don't know what that was. Maybe a big salt dip or something. I'm not real sure. Fancy hairpiece, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I guess it might have been a salt dip. It's about half there. See, half chunked off. Too shallow to be a match holder, I think. So it's probably a big master salt dip. Man, wouldn't that have been cool? Maybe we'll find the rest of it. Let's look and see. Sometimes right nearby here. So we'll dig around there just a minute. Let's see if there's anything else. All right. We've got squareness in the hole here. Just show a... Got a big old... It was Pondle, but it was a big, long neck Demijohn bottle, about 16 or 18 inches tall. Them are almost always broken, but I have dug them whole, so I saved the necks to them for some reason. And got a neat little perfume bottle. If you can see it, very good. It's got like little hobnails on it, little blank label space on the front, little hand blown 1880s cologne bottle. Yeah, cutie, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Let's see what this square is together. I'm gonna have to dig it out. It's in this hard pack stuff. There's some iron stone around it. Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Leather necks there sticking out. There was an old piece of hand painted sprig, I call that. That's probably like 1850. That's real old, but this stuff ain't that old, but oh, that's something really stuck in there. So let's see if we can get around it here. All right, I'll just shut up and let you experience what it's like to dig something like this. I don't know what it is. Could be an iron bitter. It's plain right there, but it's the size and shape of a Brown's iron bitters. Well, let's see if the neck. There's another little bottle right here. Just now, see. I don't know if it's showing up in there or not. No, it's uh, it's broke. Oh well, move that one out of the way. <laughs> Make room. Make room for progress here. All right, there's part of the neck, so that's a good sign. Let's see if we can get him up out of there a little bit. Oh, there's a big piece of iron here. And there's a piece of iron stone or something there. As is often the case, they just kind of get wedged in there. But we don't want to break it or anything, so let's see if we can carefully dig it out of there. And it is a Browns Iron Bitters. Yay! <laughs> hey man, I never get tired of digging bitters. Brown's Iron Bitters, and the other side it says Brown's Chemical Company. All right, yay! <laughs> Woohoo! All right, that's fun. I don't know if there's anything else around there. Let's see. Sometimes there's a bottle right next to it. And in this case, there was something there. Broken ones. All right, well, I'm going to dig back in there. All right, that's it for now, I guess. All right, just dug out a little 
actually dug this out first. Now this is a applied top. Look at that drippy lip on there. It's referred to as an applied lip, boy. Just a ring collar, probably off a pickle. Wide mouth food bottle of some kind. But uh, anyway, I saved that in case I need to repair one of these days, a pickle or something. Hope to get into repairing, but when I retire, <laughs> one of these days. But anyway, I pulled this out. This is kind of cool. It's an old hand-blown uh, Colgate and Company Perfumers in New York. I don't know the angle of the sunlight here. You're going to be able to see that. But anyhow, that's a nice old 1890s cologne bottle. And let me see, where's my hand digger? Right here it is. All right, right here, it looks like a, I don't know if it's pot, it's stoneware. Could be a lid. It's, it's like flat, it may just be a broken bottom off of something too. That's encrusted in this iron stuff. See, and there's wood right here. See that, how bouncy that is? It makes it hard digging. <laughs> you can say, oh, I think that's just a bottom. Well, I don't know, it might be a lid. Yeah, it is, cool, yay. I love lids. <laughs> I always like lids. That's a nice old, probably redware lid. I'm off an old crock jar. Sat down inside of the jar. Yeah, nice. Handmade. It might be a little older there. Now, I'm going to show it. I don't know if you can see it or not. But right here at the end of the hand digger, there's a blob top sticking out. Like a, like a hutch or something. I don't know if it's just a top. But it, it's... So far, it's not coming out. It looks like it might be a hutch or something. I'm going to get a little bigger shovel. Let me see. I got this little small, small blade shovel. Get a little bit more leverage with this kind of a shovel than you will with a hand digger. It takes you forever digging with a hand digger, which it's fun. You know, it's excitement. But I prefer to dig them out of there and see what else is in there. All right, there now. It's pretty well exposed. You can see it think all right let's see if it comes out it's wiggling come on to papa hey there it is what is this thing oh good grief fc lang bottling company chicago <laughs> i say good grief because i'm from illinois I come to louisiana to dig louisiana bottles and i get illinois bottles which that would be all right but chicago not so much Nothing against you Chicago guys. God bless you, man. There's some killer bottles from Chicago. I've dug my share of them. I'm very happy digging Chicago bottles, so I'm not complaining. Don't want you to misunderstand here. I'll take a hutch any day. But I just was thinking it might be something vertically I've never seen from Louisiana. Oh, man, or Texas. But, hey, that's all right. We'll take it. Nice 1890s. It's still got the Hutchison stopper in it. You probably won't be able to see it. Let me see blow it off a little bit well you can just barely see the end of the wire I'm gonna try to save that so but that's called a Hutchinson stopper soda popular in 1880s and 1890s and uh, all right it's whole at least we'll take it let's see if there's anything else right in there that's the only thing that I saw but again it's a nice little bottle zone here I'm very happy with that timing I mean, several bottles like that that's a good thing all right, well, there's a lot of broken stuff there, and I'm going to take my time and kind of go through that a little bit slower in case of buttons or marbles or something. But let's see if there's anything else right in here where that lid was. See, man, that's hard-packed stuff, though. That's it right there. There's, oh, I thought I was seeing a blue piece. Yeah, there's blue. All right, a couple people are wanting the blue. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's not flat, but maybe you can make something out of that. But we're saving the colored stuff all right that's about it for now i think all right hang in there folks go get you some tea or something good to drink some juice some water take a little break here little old digger dave get regrouped we'll see you in a minute all right back back with you at the diggings there's a little one that just popped out here I looked at it already. It's a dud. <laughs> it's a dud. Anyway, it's a little flat, smooth base. Probably 1870s or 80s. A little paneled cosmetic bottle. or it looks like there's something in it. I don't know. I'll have to look at that later. Well, sometimes they put stuff in them. I kind of like that. But anyhow, it's a little slick. 
And, uh, there was another one here a second I dug a minute ago. Slick. All right. And right down here, I'm going to get that bigger shovel out of here. It's, a, it's like a paneled extract or a medicine. See it right there at the end of the shovel. Let's see if we can dig that one together. Hope everybody's doing well today. Get you some popcorn, peanuts, something to drink. Sit back. A lot of digging to do here. <laughs> All right, let's see what this is. Man, I never get tired of this. I just love medicines. Uh, I think it's an extract. Yeah, it is. But hey, maybe it's embossed. Uh, yeah. All right, it is. Get that crust off of there. Ooh, that was a piece of glass. I don't know what that was. Look like. I don't know what that was. I was Oh, there it was. All right. Anyway, I get distracted easily when I get hot. Sorry. McMonagle and Rogers Premium Fruit Flavors, Middletown, New York. Yeah, still got a little stuff in there. <laughs> Hand blown, 1890s. And there is another one right down in here. Looks like a little round bottle. Uh-oh, maybe a nut. No. I thought I heard something. There's a lot of... A lot of broken glass right in that area though. I try to watch for buttons and things. But, all right, oh, there it is, it popped out of there. Oh, it's a little slick. Isn't that right? Nice old one though. Probably 1870s. Yeah, 80s. Let's see if there's anything else right there. I got two more little things back over here on this other side I'll show. That is up oh, to the bottom of a whiskey glass or something. All right, I don't see anything else in there right handy. So I think we'll go on ahead and come over to the other side of the hole here for a minute. All right, let's see if I can get this up. Oh, a little bit of farm there. All right, hang on here. Let's see where it's at. It's right there at the end of the shovel. You can see it right there. Carefully brushing it off. Looks like a square. A little clear square. No, it's a cologne bottle. Huh? Ain't got much on it, but it does have something. Looks like AA in a circle. Not rightly sure what that stands for, but huh. that's hand blown. A little cologne, thought it was a farina. Damn farina cologne. But, you know, it's something not very as Paul and I often say, highly embossed there. Oh, there it is. Let's see, right? I'm going to move the camera just a bit here. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it or not. Right, right there. See that? Oh, boy, I don't know. I'm not doing very good with this camera work, I'm afraid, folks. Uh, I'm just going to pull it out and be done with that one. I don't know if you can see it or not. You all just have to trust me. There's a bottle there. I'm just going to pull it out. I'm getting real hot. I need to get in the shade. Oh, the top's broke on it. All right. Well, that's that. Okay. Back for a couple more here. There's one right here sticking out. See, kind of long neck bottle. Looks like a Florida water type bottle. Let's see if it'll come on out of there. Stuck down in some clay, so there's no grinding or anything. Yeah, it looks like it is a Florida water. I don't know if that's in the camera or not. I'm hoping so. Now that's different. Yeah. Florida water, the Oakley Soap and Perfumery Company, New York. All right. Yeah. A lot of times these are Murray and Landman bottles. But you can see it's a nice big long neck bottle, isn't it? That had cologne water in it. Called it Florida water from 1880s. Nice one. All right. I'm kind of excited about this other thing too, right? Right here. Let me see that. All right. It's like redware. And that one I'm going to be real careful around. It looks like a redware jar or something here, see? Ooh, I can feel inside of it. So far, it's whole there. Let's carefully dig around that thing. Oh, there's an ink bottle too right there next to it. I don't know if that's in the camera or not. But I'm going to dig that ink bottle get it out of the way. Oh man, that's exciting when you hit one thing and can't even get that out. And there's another. I'm going to use a hand digger there, folks. 
Oh, I wanted to show this. I just hit this broken. I've dug a couple of these, but this is a pretty nice little bottle. It was F. Gua Pharmacy in Homa, Louisiana. Wouldn't that have been nice? Amber panel medicine. Like a drugstore type bottle, but it's probably a patent medicine from Gua. Homa, Louisiana. Hey, Courtney, that's that's for you, brother. <laughs> Courtney Frio, he lives down in that neck of the woods. He's a good friend of mine, wonderful guy, Courtney. His lovely wife passed away a few years ago, and I, my heart just goes out to him, man. But God bless you, man. Hey, here's a nice ink bottle. All right, I might see something on the bottom. Yeah, it says Carter's on it. All right, nice crude lip, look at that. Yay, in the 1880s probably. This old Carter's ink, man, them birds just about hit me. Holy moly, all right, here we go. Let's get this red wire pot and see what it is. That ink was right next to it. Might have thrown them away at the same time. Oh man, this is exciting. I love pottery and, oh, there it come. Come on, baby, behold, ooh, look at that one. Sweet, <laughs> yeah. Should have been some coins in it. Oh man, early hand-thrown redware. Look at that. All right. Oops. You know what? I think it might have had a handle on it, broken off. I can't tell. Might have been a mug, but anyway, doubled as a jar. <laughs> Gonna be a jar now. Wow, that's pretty cool, though. Look at that. A redware pot. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go back and turn the camera off and get me something to drink. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I don't know you'd be able to see this very good. Oh, there's a little button. That ain't what I wanted to show, but anyway, I'll keep them. But anyway, there's a couple bottles down here I'm working on. Not sure what that is. I'm gonna dig this one out first. Uh-oh, I need to tell. Well, that's already gone on that one. The blob top soda might, might save the top to it. Looks like the top is right there to it. New Hope from uh, New Orleans. Put that over here. I was going to show this. I just found this a while ago. Uh, Bryant's Root Beer. This bottle makes five gallons. Manufactured by William Davis Brook and Company, uh, Detroit. Yeah, that's 1880s or 90s. Yeah, I got a nice little cone ink. Okay. No name on that one, hand blown, 1880s, and a Lynn Perrins stopper for a Worcestershire sauce bottle. And got a real pretty piece of majolica for mosaic making. But anyway, there's another bottle right down in here. I'm not sure what it is, so let's go see if we can get that out of there. It, it's shaped kind of funny, so I can't figure it out. It might be a lamp. Oh, uh, there's a big chunk of iron right there, of course. Get that out. Let's see if that'll come out. Oh, there's a. Oh, I found one. Uh, yep. Old piece of pipe. Looks like it could be a lamp base or something. Let's see if that's what that is. Anyway, it's getting hot. You should be able to hear it crows in the background. Those things have been going nuts uh, all morning. Well, this is big, whatever it is. Not right for sure. I'm trying to work around it. I thought it was part of a lamp. Let's see if that's what that is or not. Fixing to come out. Oh, it's broke. Wow, it was a decanter. Look at that. That wheel cut flowers and leaves and stuff. Probably pondled, yep. Uh, yeah, wouldn't that have been nice? Uh, it's probably, it's got the top broken on it, but I think we'll save it anyway, because, you know, maybe make something out of that, but, all right, well, that's that. I'm going to open this hole up a little bit, get down in there. I apologize for the shadowing effect there. Might not be able to see this very good, but there's a couple bottles in there sticking out. Let's dig them together. There's actually a couple more that were broken there. 
pulled out one hole in here just a minute ago. What's it say here? Here it is. Burnett, Boston. A little flavoring extract bottle from 1880s. Boston on the side panel, so. All right, let's see what that one is. It looks like it's coming out of there. All right, it's embossed. Yay. Frank Simon, Frank L. Simon, druggist. Corner Camp in Howard Avenue, New Orleans. I think that's what it says. All right, nice one. Yeah, that's a that's a scarce bottle there. Yeah. Got to call my buddy Courtney, see if he needs that one or not. He gets first dibs on any of the <laughs> New Orleans ones. Yeah. All right. All right. Just pulled out some kind of a brass. I don't know what it is. It's circular and brass. I'm not going to mess around too much with it. It may just be a washer type thing. But anyway, anytime there's green brass like that, I always like to be careful with them. So anyway, we'll put that in our box. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a pot lid in here sticking out. See that? Let's see if we can get that out of there. All right. Yeah. How much that's showing up there in this sunlight, but anyway, it says uh, Maison Doran. Got the address, Grenier Street, Paris, and that's a lid to like some kind of a little mustard, mustard jar. I think I'm trying to shade it. You might be able to see it a little better. But anyway, I'll clean it up later. But uh, anyway, there's a couple more in here showing. Let's see. I'm gonna, I don't know if there's anything else right there. It's a nice little trash spot. And I'll try to show. And then there's another one. I got the camera down in the hole. I'm hoping that maybe. Let's see if it's right there. See that? Oh, and there's one up above it. I didn't, oh, it broke. Three sided thing there. I, you never know. Maybe there are more. It's like mushrooms. There's a little button. <laughs> yeah, I always save little buttons. Stick that in my pocket so I don't get lost. But. Oh, there's a little bot right there. Let's see what that one is. Let's see if it's whole. Yep. Some kind of them little French things. I don't think there's anything on that one. Nope. Little smooth base cologne type bottle. Alright, set that one up there. Just rolled out a real cool little bead. A little green blown glass bead. Not sure, it's like, almost shaped like a flower or something. It's kind of pretty. And a piece of redware with uh, looks like slip trailed decoration on it. Real early piece. And broken. Uh, I can put that back in the shadows there. You might be able to see it better. Some little uh, porcelain stuff with pretty flowers on it. So, anyway, I'm going to save all those. All right. Sun's beating down on me here, but. <laughs> Got three things in here. First of all, a little ceramic pot. Looks like some kind of a medical salve pot. Hopefully a lid somewhere nearby. That one's whole. Let's dig it out first. And then there's a some kind of a green long neck bottle here and another little, looks like an extract bottle underneath that. So let's dig them out in order here. Let's get the white salve pot out. Yeah, I like those because sometimes they're Nice embossed lids to those. Yeah, good. It looks like it's whole. Usually don't have anything on them, but yeah, that's a nice one there. So hopefully we'll find a lid for that. Sweet. And then secondly, let's see if that's in the camera right there. Whoops. Knocked the camera over. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got the camera right in the hole here. So let's see if that's that's gonna show up there. Trying to get it down in there where the angle of the sun's not quite so bad and glare, you know. Because I know you can't hardly see. Alright, let's see what that one is. That one looks like it's whole. It's, uh, another sperm sewing machine oil. Alright. Second one of the day of those. Nice bold embossed one. Sperm sewing machine oil. From the sperm oil, 1880s. Nice hand blown bottle. And then the third one. Uh oh, is it at the top, bro? No, so far it looks good. Nice, interesting looking green bottle there. Yeah. Can you guess what it is? I 
think I know. It's a long neck. It's got a shoulder, and hopefully it'll be embossed on there. I don't feel it though, so this may be an unembossed one. But let's see what it is. It's stuck in there pretty good still. All right. Everybody's having a good day. I'm having a warm day. <laughs> I left Illinois. It was raining and pouring. Sure, Miss Shelley. All right, there she is. Yeah, it's a Coca Mariani. All right, cocaine, cocaine wine bottle. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that very good. Coca Mariani, Paris. And it'll have it again on the bottom there. Let's see. So, all right. Well, oh, that's a nice bottle. Yay. I can show it here. Sorry. Yeah, Coca Mariani. Right there with our little pot and our sperm sewing machine oil bottle there. All right. Well, it's a good day. Praise God. Yeah. Sorry about that. I can't tell. I'm stuck down here in this hole. But anyway, there was a broken nurser. Now let's see what that stoneware ink is right there, right next to it. It's the one I was working on. All right. There she comes. All right. Look at that. Let's make sure it's in the camera here. <laughs> I'm sitting here. Yay, look at that. And you can't even see it. Hey, it's embossed near the bottom. Like a French ink. Galligan and Company. Lee Essex. The English. Boy, it's a nice pretty one though. Look at that. Alright, yay. Okay, let's set that up there. And I got two more to go here. One being right there. Can you see that one? It's a little. It's about ready to come out anyway. Oh, it's a little, little long, long neck slick. A little food bottle or medicine or something. Boy, three or four bottles right there. Maybe there's some more. What's that thing here? That's uh, fucking whatever that is. Some old wood. All right, nice, nice little trash spot though. Dumps go that way, man. You dig and you dig and you don't find anything, and then all of a sudden you score. All right, and then the last one is right here. I'll try to dig out this overbird so you can see it. It's pretty close to the camera there. Looks like a big, maybe an amber whiskey or a beer or something. Don't fit too many blob beers. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, it might be a blob beer. I don't know. I think it's a whiskey. Dig underneath it. Maybe it's a bitters. Wouldn't that be cool? Nice bitters. Oh, it looks good though, whatever it is. I always like hitting whiskeys and stuff in this age. A lot of applied top stuff down in here. Alright, it's about to come out. There's a piece of glass right there. I don't want to risk chipping the lips, so I'm going to be real careful with it. Trying to pull it out from the bottom. Let's dig out the bottom a little bit more. There it goes. All right. Oh, it's unembossed. Boy, it is a nice early beer, though. And DHC, Alexander and David H. Chambers from Pittsburgh. That's an 1880s applied lip, maybe 70s. Boy, it's a shame that didn't have something on it. Look at that. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the camera off here. Ooh, there's a breeze blowing today, but man, it's hot. It's in the 80s. Yeah, nice little assortment there. So, all right. Well, I'm going to take a break, get me something to eat, something to drink. God bless you. All right. Got back from my lunch break. Took a little break and got me some good stuff to eat, some fruit and good Gatorade and stuff. You got to stay, de stay dehydrated. You got to stay hydrated. Or you'll get dehydrated in this heat. But anyway, I'll show a, a blob top or hutch soda there. I'll get in a minute. I just pulled this out. This was a pommel bottom to one of them big demijohns. I hit the neck to it earlier. But boy, wouldn't that have been something. But I just hit these. Hit a little cone ink bottle with a sheared lip on it. A little aqua. No, no embossing on it. And a nice pot. Probably for a toothpaste or shaving cream. Haven't found the lid yet, but let's hope that's in there. 
and a nice drugstore bottle from New Orleans and I can't quite make out the name on it my eyes are a little bit foggy but maybe it'll show up enough on the camera but it's a nice street address here in New Orleans and, uh, and a little slick and a real cool bottle it's a cobalt blue it says Ergotine de Bonjol Bonjean, Bonjol, Bonjol <laughs> whatever but it's hand blown and it's got a little hand tooled square ring collar well, it reminds me of them Wyeth poison bottles that are cylinder like that but ergotine uh, ergot ergot is like a poison stuff so I don't know if that's a poison bottle but interesting it's French but it's nice 1880s so I'm gonna try to set the camera right here in the dirt I'm gonna try to dig out that that blob top there let's see it'll show or not get my camera set there all right got me a shovel oh, let's see if that's gonna be in there or not How about that right there maybe okay there's some bricks right there too right. You just have to be so careful at times because that could be a ball of right around it but I sure do love it A warm day. I hope everybody's been able to get out and and uh, enjoy this outdoors. All right, there it is. Yeah, it's whole. All right. Oops. Apologize for my camera work shakiness and stuff. All right. New South Bottling Works, Buckley and Kelly. To Crondelet Street address, New Orleans. Nice blob top. Yeah, first soda of the day. Found a lot of medicine bottles, a lot of sick sickness in here. But they weren't drinking many sodas back in the 1880s and 90s. I don't know if that's another bottle I see in there or not. Right there, might be something there. All right, well if it is, I'll come back. There's there's some broken stuff, tops and things. Been finding a few buttons. And... All right. All right, just had a broken Dr. Harder's Wild Cherry Bitters from St. Louis up in my neck of the woods. <laughs> Wish that had been whole. Broken pommel bottle. See, you had a rough pommel scar on the bottom of that. Not sure what it was. Some kind of a big, tall food bottle, olive oil maybe. Got a uh, drugstore bottle, IL Lions. Got a picture of a lion on it from New Orleans. That's kind of nice and a slick. And there's one showing down in here. Which I'll try to set the camera up in a good spot there. Let's see. Can you see that one? There it is. I'll set it right there. Okay, hang on here. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Really rusty stuff. Uh-oh, there's another one. Something right next to it. Cool. All right, that one I think will come out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Oh, it's embossed. Yay. I don't know what it is. Let's see. Uh, it's a J.F. Hollerback. New Orleans. Holler back now. If you need anything, y'all just holler back. <laughs> Sorry, people are named Hollerback. I don't want me to make fun of your name. That's just a cool name on it. I don't know if I'd seen that one. Nice old 1880s drugstore bottle from New Orleans. Cool. All right, let's see what that other thing is right there. I'm going to set the camera right there. You can see there's a cylinder bottle showing. Let's see if we can get that one out. Oh, it's been a fun day. I tell you what, anytime you dig bottles, it's a fun day. And, oh, it's a big one. And it is highly unembossed. Look at that. Ain't that a shame. Mm -mm -mm. Nice big aqua oval medicine from 1880s. Not a thing on it. That's all right. They keep that one anyway. All right. Go back in there and see if there's anything else. All right. Up close action here. Uh, little 
like it's an amber long neck medicine bottle of some kind. I'm hoping it's one of them. No, 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 it looks like it's a cylinder, so not what I thought it was. So I'm not sure what it is, but hey, there's a little heat bottle there. Da -da -da. I think I got it too close, don't I? Yeah, I got it too close. Well, there's a cone ink. Just hit like a little cobalt Bromel seltzer there, a little hand blown, one of the first ones with a square ring collar. And this bottle has uh, Coster on the bottom. Coster made a lot of bug poisons, rat poisons, rat killers, and for bed bugs, cockroaches. And there was a couple little doodads in there, marble and something else. But anyway, um, let me see if I can set this back down here. All right, there we go. Now there's a, ouch, some kind of a thing underneath it here I'm trying to get out. Okay, so much for that. Now, let's see if we can get through all the rocks and bricks and rubble, get to our little amber bottle there. Okay, it's like an amber long neck. I think it's amber, now. Well, maybe it's not. Oh, it's probably aqua. It looks like Florida water now. Oh, it's amber. <laughs> that sun will play tricks on you, you know, with the shadows. See, I always have to get underneath them like that. And get them loosened up. All right, there it is. Well, it is amber. How about that? I was right. And it's embossed. Standard Perfumery Works, New York. Yeah, look at that. It's a real pretty color, too. Kind of like a yellow. All right, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I like that. That's cool. Nice color on it. Okay. Get back in there. All right. Got done with the dig. It ended up just being a one-day dig. Um, I decided I got awful hot. Uh, basically overheated, which I have to really watch. I kind of have a heart condition, so I got to be careful about that. And I per got pretty hot. I'm not used to the temperatures there in Louisiana. But anyway, I did some scouting around, lined up some stuff, and had a lot of fun. So it was a good, good dig. But anyway, I got everything cleaned up, and uh, we'll look at a few of them here. I'll give a few prices. And again, I just emphasize that it's kind of prices that I put on it in my eBay store. Uh, or Paul and we got to allow for the eBay fees and and the PayPal fees the postage which you know on most bottles is around 10 bucks anymore um, you know and then the income tax and Social Security tax and high state taxes and uh, you know it's all included in there so but I'll just give you a ballpark ideal roughly and I know it's not about the value it's about the history of these things but um, I'm just trying to be a help, you know, people that are uh, beginners or, or bottle experts alike, you know, that you know, maybe haven't had some of these bottles before. So, all right, let's get right into it. First one here is a 1890 soda bottle, uh, New South Bottling Works, Buckley and Kelly, Crondelet Street address, New Orleans. And um, that's about a $25 bottle, 25 30 bucks. And um, next to it, we've got a Duffy Malt Whiskey uh, from Rochester, New York. And I don't know if the sun's going to let me show this any better angle here. But anyway, you can see it's nicely embossed. It does have an applied lip on it, kind of crude applied lip. And it's got the 1886 patent date on the bottom. But it's a real common bottle, but probably still worth about 25 30 bucks. Time you allow for postage and stuff. If I had it at a flea market, I'd probably price it around 10 bucks. <laughs> so, and this is a rare bottle, this cobalt one. It says Ergotine de Bonjean. Bonjour. I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's French. And uh, Ergotine was a was a from a plant, ergot. And uh, it was used for uh, female for vaginal injections and stuff. 
So uh, that's a pretty scarce bottle. It's from 1880s. I actually saw an advertisement for it from 1877. So it's from you know around that period. And uh, as the value, I don't really know on that one. That'd probably be about a $40 bottle, I think, because it's cobalt and it's rare. And next to it, we got a IL Lions uh, drugstore bottle with a lion on it. It's pretty cool. I like that one. But it's a Ball and Lions, successors to Ball and Lions, New Orleans. It's a square 1880s drugstore bottle. Common, but probably about 20 bucks. And um, real pretty yellow standard perfumery. Standard perfumery works in New York. And a uh, big long neck uh, Florida water bottle, I call them. It's Florida water. And uh, you see the other one right next to it, shaped just like it, with a long neck, cylinder. That standard perfumery works because of the color. It'd probably be about a $30 bottle, maybe a little better. And uh, Florida Water, uh, the Oakley Soap and Perfumery Company, New York. And yeah, it's a nice 1880s bottle, hand blown with a hand tooled uh, collar on both of those Florida Water bottles. It was a type of a clone. And a uh, real famous bottle, Coca Mariani Paris. Yeah, it's one of their first bottles. It does have an applied lip. You can see it's got a drip of glass underneath it there. And uh, got a nice crude whittle. I don't know if you can see that, but it was a uh, Mariani is oh, coca wine, wine of coca, which was uh, similar to cocaine, you know, the coca plant. And it was a medicinal wine, very popular in the 1890s. And this is a real cool bottle. It's got a lot of writing on it. You probably can't see it very good. But it says the Q to Cure System of Curing Constitutional Humors. Now on the other side, it's got uh, Potter Drug and Chemical Corporation, and that's got an applied lip on it also. You can see the little drippy glass there. That's a pretty common bottle. That one's got haze, so that's probably about a $10 or $15 bottle. If it was nice and clean, it might bring about $25, $30. Bucks. But again, pretty common uh, for us. We dig. We dig them fairly regular. And the Browns Iron Bitters here. Nice one. Boldly embossed Browns Iron Bitters. And uh, that's from the 1880s. Hand blown. And it's probably about a $30 bottle. It's about what I get out of them. $25, $30. Bucks. And a couple drugstore bottles from New Orleans. Got a J.F. Hollerback. Hollerbach. I like to say Hollerback. Hollerback, man. <laughs> Hollerback now, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's 1880s. Got a tooled ring collar. Same way with this one next to it. Looks a lot the same, don't they? Hand tooled ring collar. This one's a Frank, Frank L. Simon Druggist, Corner Camp in Howard Avenue, New Orleans. So, uh, yeah. I got a good friend of mine that collects the New Orleans bottles, Courtney Frio. I'll have to get in touch with Courtney. So if you see this, brother, if you need one of them, give me a holler. Holler back. <laughs> All right, then going down to the bottom. I just couldn't resist that. Sperm sewing machine oils. We got two of them. It's from sperm whale. Sperm whale oil was used for sewing machines but it was also used in all kinds of things for guns, gun lubricants and, and other moving parts. Uh, almost drove the sperm whale to extinction. They, early on they used sperm whale oil in their lamps, whale oil lamps. That was from sperm whales. And uh, then they used it for lubricating uh, sewing machines and stuff. And these are very popular bottles from 1880s and uh, they get about 20 bucks a piece on them. This is an unusual bottle. It's a little, I call it an ink bottle. And it says uh, Gallicon and Company uh, Lay Essex, which was in England. And there you might be able to see a little bit better. It's stamped into it. But it's a real uh, cute little stoneware bottle from probably 1870s. Um, 
I remember digging these out of 1860s pits before, so it's it can go back to the 1860s for sure. That's an old uh, pottery, the Gala, Galacan or Galacan. I don't know how you pronounce that, but that's a pretty cool bottle. Well, it's probably a $30 bottle. An old Hutch from Chicago, the FC Lang Bottling Company, Chicago, and it is an applied applied lip hutch had the hutch stopper in it but it crumbled apart I couldn't save it but it's embossed vertical I was hoping to be something real strange from down there but not a real rare bottle it's probably a $20 bottle a couple little hand blown Bromel seltzers always pretty cobalt blue both of those are hand blown with hand finished lips pretty common bottles about five bucks a piece uh, New Orleans medicine bottle, IL Lions and Company. About the same company it was that drugstore bottle a while ago. And again, it's not a real rare bottle. 1880s medicine. Probably had a labels on it for some kind of patent medicine. And uh, yeah, that's that's only probably about a $15 bottle. Big tall amber applied lip beer. I don't know if you can see that lip on that or not very well. But it is an applied lip. And now on the bottom, it's got the glass maker's mark. And DHC, which stands for Alexander and David H. Chambers out of Pittsburgh. So that's called an export beer. Tall one, probably 24 ounce. We call them quartz, you know, just for short, you know, just for your reference. But they don't hold a quart, usually 24, 26 ounces. But uh, you can see that's got the old collar on that one. 18, late 1870s, early 80s. And uh, eh, probably $10 bottle. There's a Bryant's Root Beer. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. This bottle makes five gallons. Manufactured by Williams Davis and Brooks and Company out of Detroit. And... Uh, that was a competitor of Hire's root beer. It was a concentrate. Makes five gallons out of that thing. Again, it's 1880s, early 90s. Uh, good shape. Probably about 15 bucks. And a beautiful green uh, Capers bottle. Capers was a plant that uh, they actually uh, used the buds for flavoring foods and eating them. People loved them. And uh, the 1800s, I think you can still get them, Capers. But this was a typical bottle, the emerald green with a sheared lip on there, 1880s. And uh, that's about a 20, $25 bottle. James Gennart, Creole Mustard, New Orleans. And again, it's hand blown, as are almost all these bottles. And uh, that's, that's a $20 bottle. Cute little. Sharpened Dome, Baltimore, there, six-sided. Some people call them poisons. They might have had some kind of pills in it that if you took internally, it was poison, but uh, it was probably a pill bottle. Could have been or may not have been poisons, but you know, it's a real common bottle. Probably, probably about 10 bucks. Another druggist. I think we had one of them up there. Frank L. Simon Druggist, Corner Camp in Howard, New Orleans. So, got two sizes of that. I'm going to put that one back up there. So, so all right, Courtney, if you're watching, you got two sizes there. See if you need one of them. Give me a holler. <laughs> this is the newest bottle. One of the first ones I found there. It was right underneath the grass. American Bottling Company, Saratoga Street, address New Orleans. That one's probably from 1920. In fact, I think it's no, it's got a 1915 mold date on it. So 1915, very common bottle. Three or four bucks probably on that one. This is cool. One of my favorite finds. It's a redware uh, little jar pot. I guess it was a mug because you can see where it looks like a handle broke off of it at one time. But uh, it's an old hand thrown. May not be able to see the rings on the, around the inside there, the potter's fingers, but that was a hand thrown uh, redware pot. Really interesting. I like that. And there's another redware piece, an early lid. 
And, uh, I don't know if that's stamped or something. Didn't notice that. I'll have to look at that. I don't think it is. I think it's just a mark in the pottery. But <laughs> anyway, that was for a jar. Big wide mouth jar. This is cool. Another lid. It's a mustard lid. Maison Dorin. Uh, from Paris. It's got the coat of arms there and stuff on it. And that, that was a lid that sat in. You know, inside the neck of some kind of a jar. Probably done a lot of them. Coster. This is Coster on the bottom. You can see. And that was a bug poison bottle. 1880s hand blown. Big hand tooled. Square ring collar on it. And had some kind of rat poison or something. Probably about a $15, $20 bottle. Of the lid's probably about the same. Alright, common uh, Mexican Mustang Liniment. Leon Manufacturing Company, New York. And uh, I hate to keep using the word common. I know some people are going to get aggravated by that, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, you know, we dig a lot of these kind of things. So well, I'm, when I say something rare, that means that... Uh, it's rare <laughs> and this one is not Mexican Mustang Limit. Most bottle diggers have dug quite a few of these but real popular uh, liniment in the 1800s uh, I've got pondled examples of earliest ones are from St. Louis and they later moved to New York in the late 1850s early 60s and this is an 1880s early 90s example with a tooled, tooled lip and uh, probably worth about 10 bucks See an assortment of inks, little, three little cone inks here in a row. This one's got a sheared lip, but they're all blank. There's nothing on them. Yeah, five bucks a piece. And nice little Carter's ink there, embossed on the bottom. A little different, almost barrel shaped, isn't it, with the rings and stuff. But uh, that's probably a $15 bottle. Cute little, little uh, perfume bottle here. It's got like little diamond hobnails on it and uh, no name on it. Neat little bottle though. There's a Burnett Boston extract bottle. Another extract called McMonagle and Rogers premium fruit flavors. And uh, both of them probably about 10 bucks a piece. There's another Hutch soda. It had the top broke, but I saved it anyway. I thought somebody might want it for a couple bucks. <laughs> I sold New Orleans soda. This thing has got the top broke on it, but I just liked it. You can see it's got etched uh, ferns on it. It's got beautiful hand copper wheel cut ferns. It's got a pottle scar on the bottom. It was probably a decanter, but I'm thinking of maybe you know grinding that down one of these days, making a vase out of it. <laughs> but uh, a couple more little bottles there. Colgate and Company. It was a perfume bottle. A little slick with panels on it. Had some stuff in it, but turned out they were just uh, some kind of little rocks. Maybe some kid put in there. There's a couple slicks, just different medicines. and That's a that cologne bottle. It might as well be unbossed. I think it just says AA or something on it. There's a little hard rubber uh, cigar or pipe pipe uh, stem there. It's got a little threaded end on it where it screws into the rest of it. And some stoppers. You know, apothecary bottles or medicine bottle stoppers there. Ground. Some Lee and Perrins. You say Lee and Perrins on them. Got three of those. And you didn't get the bottles, but you got the stoppers, so <laughs> probably got the bottle somewhere, but and uh, this is cool. It's it's broke. I just I don't even have it glued together. And you can see there's a unfortunately there's a big piece missing. But it was a redware bank, and I tried to leave the color on there the best I could. You can see it's you know like I say it's broke, but um, but it's a handmade bank. And it, I don't know if it was a lemon or what that was. And you can see the coin slot. But yep, that's all we got of that. There's a little. Ceramic pot, um, medical salve jar ointment, something like that. Never got the lid. There's another base, pot base there. Probably a 
toothpaste, or shaving cream, something like that. They're very popular. Got a few little buttons. Got one that's a. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what it's made out of. Probably bone. A little early bone button and three white glass ones there. And some other little stuff, broken pieces, and save some of that stuff for eventually repairing maybe. Thought somebody's kind of pretty there. Just hobnail. Pretty if somebody wants it for mosaics. But that's about it. Um, fun day. But anxious to get out there on the next next dig. We've got a couple good things lined up, so I'm hoping uh, maybe tomorrow Paul and I can get out and dig, and uh, if not, maybe me and Shelly. <laughs> so, but we're gonna try to do something, and uh, let's let's all stick together. We're all in this together with this pandemic. And again, I just want to encourage everybody, and um, thank you for you know hanging in there and not losing our minds or our wits about us. Really appreciate all the, the frontline workers out there, ambulance uh, people and the hospital workers and the doctors and the nurses and the nursing homes and you know, let alone all the truckers, all the people that's getting the food to us and the toilet paper and the things that are so needed. And God bless all of you, man. And this is going on around the world, so we're uh, kind of a world community, aren't we? And God will get us through this. It's, I think it's going to be better than ever. I just feel it in my heart. I may take a little while, but, you know, it's going to be really good. And But for right now, I still hope that you can get outside and and uh, have a walk, enjoy the, enjoy the air, the fresh air. They can't take that away from us. So hang in there and... Keep on uh, sending us your comments. Thank you for all of those who subscribe. We really do appreciate that. And uh, we hope to see you in the next video. So, uh, got any suggestions? Uh, leave them down there in our comments. And we always appreciate that. I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. So, hang in there and we'll see you in the next video.